Annyeonghaseyo, you. Annyeonghaseyo, hey you. It's Italia, and today I am answering a question that you guys ask me a lot. I am addressing a concern that you guys have expressed to me on multiple occasions. That question or that concern is, can I travel to Korea if I don't speak Korean? If you don't know me, hi, my name is Natalia, like I mentioned earlier. I have been living here in Korea for a little over a year and a half now, but I lived in Korea for a year back in 2016 as an exchange student at a university outside of Seoul. Uh, kind of like countryside Korea and then I visited Korea multiple times as a tourist before finally moving here. During all my time spent in Korea, I have visited every single metropolitan city. I have visited so many like mid-sized cities as well as rural towns and I've even visited some remote Korean islands. So I feel like I am pretty qualified, if you will, to talk about how easy or not easy it is to travel around Korea if you don't know any Korean. As you might have guessed, this video is specifically for those of you that are coming to Korea as tourists. This is not for whether like you can move to Korea and not know any Korean. If you want me to make that video, I will definitely make it. You can like let me know in the comment section, but let's not waste any time and jump into the video. Go go! Let's start off with what I personally would be most intimidated by if I was coming into Korea for the first time without knowing any Korean. And that would be the public transportation system. So if you are planning a trip here to Korea, you've probably heard that Korea has a very, very good public transportation system. It's very affordable and I am very happy to report to you that those things are very true. Like facts. You might have also heard that the public transportation system is very robust. It's very expansive. Once you start using it, it's very easy to figure out how to get where you're wanting to go, especially because all of the subways, all of the buses will have English. So not only are the stops labeled in Korean and in English, but the announcements made inside the subway cars and made inside the buses are announced first in Korean and then in English. And then the arrival boards, if you will, are available in Korean first and then in English. So if you're on the subway car, you're headed to Seoul Station, the subway will literally announce to you, this stop is Seoul Station. If you are looking to transfer to lines A, B, or C, get off at this station. Like it will literally, really good English, like you'll know where you're going. And with the buses, like I said earlier, they do the same thing. Like there's no need to worry. To calm your fears even more, the two major map apps here in Korea, those two apps being Naver Maps and Kakao Maps are both available in English. So while doing your like travel research, you probably heard that like Google Maps is not to be trusted while in Korea. That unfortunately is still true but that's okay because if you get either of these apps, they're available in English. They will tell you exactly which subway you need to take, which subway you need to transfer to, what bus you need to transfer to, to get to your final destination. In addition, the Seoul government actually released a new transportation app specifically for tourists just last week. Like I haven't tested it, but it is available in English. It will use your GPS location to show you where the nearest subway is, and it'll tell you exactly how to get to your final destination. So with these three apps, you'll be fine. You don't need to worry. It'll all be okay. Now I do need to mention, if you will be traveling to a rural town in Korea, like the kind of town that only has like one, two, maybe three bus lines in it, Actually, three bus lines would be a lot for a rural town. Let's say one, maybe two. They don't do anything in English. Everything is in Korean. So if you happen to be traveling out there, then uh, you're gonna need to keep an eye on your map app to see when your stop is and be like prepared to press the button to get off and then actually get off. While speaking of more rural areas, it's important to note that rural towns don't have subways. Like, unless they are a city that is connected to the Seoul subway line, if you know Korean geography, there's Seoul, then there's a province that surrounds Seoul called Gyeonggi-do, and then there are like provinces around that, right? So all of Gyeonggi-do is part of the Seoul subway line. And then the Seoul subway line actually goes into like the province under Gyeonggi-do, which is Chungcheongnam-do, which is actually where I studied abroad. Um, so it goes out there, but the subway only comes like every 45 minutes to an hour and it's not very expansive at all. It's literally just like the end of one line that like 
goes out there. Some other cities also have subway lines like Daegu and Gwangju, but they're very small, they're very limited. You are way more likely to be taking the buses in those areas. If you're gonna be traveling outside of Seoul and outside of Busan, check to see if there's a subway line first because there's a good chance there won't be one unless you're going to a metropolitan area like Gwangju or Daegu or Daejeon, I guess. But yeah. Another thing you might have heard about Korea is that the train system is very good. I don't know why I did that. That was kind of cringe, but like it's very, very good. There are a lot of high speed trains. And while I've never taken any of the regular speed trains, assuming that tourists aren't going to want to waste their time and will take the high speed trains if they're going from Seoul to Busan, for example, the high speed trains all announce their stops first in Korean and then in English. They have the little monitors in every train car. It'll even let you know in advance saying like, we are about to arrive at Seonan station. Please prepare to get off the train. You know, so there's no need to worry. They're super easy to take. When my parents dropped me off as an exchange student like seven years ago, they were able to take one of the high-speed trains all by themselves without knowing any Korean. They got to where they were going just fine. They got back to Seoul just fine. Now, when it comes to actually booking tickets for these trains, you don't have to worry about that process either. You can do it online, you can do it in English, and it will accept your foreign card. So I'm gonna leave the link for Corail or like the name of the public transportation system here, the ticket reservation website, in in my description box for you. And of course you can always go into the train station and buy it there at the kiosk or go up to the teller. Now, if you're planning to leave Seoul and you're not interested in taking one of the trains, you might've heard that there is a very, very nice long haul bus system, basically like charter buses. So these technically aren't part of the public transportation system. They're run by a lot of different private companies, but there are bus stations, like charter bus stations in different areas of Seoul. All the brands use the same bus stops. So it's kind of like it's public transit. When it comes to actually booking tickets for one of these buses, there are several ways you can go about getting some. The first way is by going into the bus station, going up to the kiosk or the ticketing office and buying a ticket. It. Another way you can go about getting some is by using the online reservation website. I've never used this website, so I can't say whether or not it will accept a foreign bank card, but it is available in English, so it's definitely worth checking out. Some of these buses do make stops along the way, and the announcements, which sometimes are made by the bus driver themselves, are only done in Korean. So if you happen to be taking one of those buses and your stop isn't the very last stop for that bus, then you should probably be like checking your map app every now and then to see when you're approaching your stop so that you know like, oh, I need to get off here. Now let's talk about taxis. So I will say hailing a taxi off the street can be a little stressful if you don't know any Korean. This is because the drivers don't tend to speak English. Have the address of your final destination available to you in Korean and just pass it over to the driver so they can enter it into their GPS system. I'd also like to mention to you guys that if you wanna be extra kind to your taxi drivers, uh, it's best if you take a screenshot of the Korean address and then zoom in. So it's in really, really big font. So a lot of the taxi drivers are middle-aged or even approaching like senior citizen age. I've noticed that a lot of the taxi drivers, if you give them like the normal sized, like default phone text of an address, they struggle to read it. And while they might not say anything, you can see their eyes kind of like squinting, trying to read it. Now, rather than hailing a taxi off the side of the street, I suggest that you guys download the Kakao Tea app. So the Kakao Tea app is basically like Uber or like Lyft in Korea, but it calls an actual taxi. It works the same as Uber and Lyft. You say like, pick me up here, take me over there. It'll tell you what the estimated cost of your ride is and then it calls the taxi driver. And for those of you where I say call makes you anxious, don't worry, it doesn't actually call anybody. It calls them to your location, you check the license plate of the taxi that's pulling up to you, and you get in. Now, in that situation, the taxi driver will try to confirm your final destination with you. For example, they might say like, oh, Yonsei Dehakyo ijo. Right, like, oh, you're going to Yonsei University, right? And in that situation, if you really don't know Korean, I guess you could technically say ne even if you don't know what's going on. This is one of the few situations where I would actually tell someone that doesn't speak Korean to just say ne, because you know that you entered the correct final destination or you should have double checked that you entered the final destination correctly and you checked the license plate number. So 
it's probably correct. I've never had a taxi driver confirm the final destination with me and it'd be wrong. I mean, it's up to you. Decide whether you want to say ne or not. But if you don't, they're gonna think you aren't the passenger that's supposed to be getting into that taxi. Oh, also when you're using the Kakao Tea app, the default payment is like automatic payment, meaning you link your Korean bank card to the app. But if you just swipe it to the left, it says like pay the driver. And oh yeah, this app is completely in English. Like, I mean, it's available in Korean, but it's also available in English. So it'll say like pay the driver upon like completion of the ride or something like that. Just pick that one. It'll allow you to call the taxi. Then you can just give them your foreign card or cash or whatever. Now I do need to mention in order to use this particular app, you do need to have a Korean phone number. So when you get to Incheon airport, there is a counter where you can get an international phone plan from KT or one of the other Korean carriers, I highly encourage you to do that. They're extremely, extremely affordable and you can get good like data and like call plans. My sister got one when she visited me a few months ago. She only paid like 30,000 won for quite a bit of data. Now let's talk about accommodations. So if you are staying in a nice hotel in Seoul, you do not need to worry at all. The reception desk will speak English. So even if not every single employee there speaks English, they do have people there that speak English. So if you come in and you look like me, for example, like you very obviously are not Korean, the person that speaks English will probably be the one that runs up to assist you. If you look more uh, Korean, then it might take them a moment to realize that you don't speak Korean. Now moving on to Airbnbs. If you are staying in an Airbnb that is near like central Seoul or at least like tourist area Seoul, while the host might not speak English, they probably have the whole guide for the unit or the room or the apartment or whatever translated into English. It might be awkwardly phrased English, but they're trying to help you out. Just, just accept it and be like, thank you host. Yes. If you stay in a hostel, you're also very, very likely to find information on like how to use your room, how to use the restroom. I don't know. In English, since like the target audience is actually foreigners, not Korean people. And so while the staff might not speak English, which to be honest, I think every hostel I stayed in when I was an exchange student, the staff spoke English. Now let's talk about food, cause you gotta eat. And for some of you, that might be the main reason you're coming to Korea because the food is just so good. Just so good. So if you're sticking to the touristy areas of Seoul, you don't have to worry. The restaurants are gonna have one of three things. They will either have a menu that has English, Chinese, and Japanese on it. They will have a menu that has Korean, then English under it or English right next to the Korean, or it will have a kiosk that has an English, Chinese, and Japanese setting. So no matter where you go, it'll be fine. They are, they are ready for you. Like they have planned for you to come visit and like eat at their restaurant. Okay, not to mention that a lot of the staff at the restaurants located in Myeongdong, for example, or in Hongdae, they speak English. Not necessarily every server will, but like a lot of them do. They've prepared. For you to visit so you don't need to be stressed. Now if you plan to explore neighborhoods of Seoul that are less touristy or maybe like not popular among tourists at all, the likelihood that they're gonna have English is gonna go down unless it's a chain restaurant. So the chain restaurants do tend to have English. Uh, I don't I don't know why they just do. I think it's like part of like an aesthetic that they're like trying to go for like a like, we're a chain, we're global, even if they're not actually global. But in that case, you don't have to worry too much. You can just pull up Papago, which is a translation app. It's specifically made by a Korean company. So I feel like the translations are pretty good on Papago, like I'm not gonna lie. You can just take a picture of the Korean menu, you know, snap, snap, upload it to Papago and it will translate the whole image for you into English. So again, with food dishes, the names might sound a little awkward, but you'll still understand now, when it comes to aesthetic cafes, this might come to shock a lot of you, but in aesthetic cafes, English usually tends to be part of the aesthetic. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but like they want to use English on their menus. Like a lot of aesthetic cafes, their menu is completely in English. The little like labels that they have on their bakery items, completely in English. And then aesthetic cafes that don't have their full menus in English, they will have it in Korean and then in English. So again, you will be fine. And then there are a few aesthetic cafes that have everything in Korean. And if you happen to be able to read hunger, you will be fine. You can literally read the menu and it'll say like Americano or Expresso, right? Or you can, again, just take the Papago app and take a quick picture of it and it will translate it for you. Now, when it comes to like the chain cafes, all the menus are in Korean and in English and the chain cafes are really starting to become big fans of the kiosks that I mentioned earlier. 
I don't know why, I guess they think it like makes the baristas more productive because they don't have to take orders. In general, when it comes to traveling around Korea as a tourist, I will always encourage you to learn some Korean, even if it's just the basics, because it will make things easier, make things more enjoyable, it'll just help you out a lot, but I would never say that it's a requirement. It is not a requirement. You can come here not knowing any Korean, you will be fine. You will still have a great time. You will be able to get around. I just want to say like Seoul in particular is trying really, really hard. Like the Seoul government is trying really, really hard to make Seoul a top tourist destination for international travelers. Like they're trying really, really hard to expand the information and services that are available in English as well as like Chinese and Japanese. Things are getting easier all the time for people that don't speak Korean, don't forget you can always stop a random foreigner that you see and ask them for help. I feel like people think they have to ask a Korean for help. You don't. We're pretty smart, okay? Like, I think I know so really well. You can stop random foreigners for help. Now, if you'd like to hear me talk in depth about how Korean people treat foreigners that don't speak Korean compared to foreigners that do speak Korean, I made a video about that. You can check it out right here. Hope this video helped you out and calmed your fears. Tell me bye, you guys. Bye.